there's the punk fans and there's the anti-punk fans. You know, we like punk, but we don't like the young bucks or this or that. Well, now the thing is, we gotta we gotta tell you how much better Collision is than Dynamite. <clears throat> They've convinced themselves that they're like two completely different promotions or something like that. Yeah, sure. Even though the same guys writing both shows, not a lot of people, but there was a few that are like, "God damn, best show of the week, this Collision." Whoa. And it's like, listen, do we have nothing better to do with our lives and to just fight about everything all the time? Collision was not the best show of the week, okay? It just wasn't. I'm going to steal this line from Philly Leotard Zero. Brock Anderson has the gear of his dad from the 1980s, the hair of his dad from the 1990s, and the physique of his dad from a Georgia bar in the 2000s. Wow. Darby says, You're a dinosaur, right? A dinosaur. You've been around 65 billion years, right? And all of a sudden, in the background, you hear Luchasaurus, who never talks. You just hear him go, Million! <laughs> he goes, Hey, you've been around 65 billion years. You ever had a skateboard shoved up your ass? And when you think about it, if you've been alive 65 million years, I mean, there's a decent chance you've had a skateboard shoved up your ass. You just assume that if you're alive for a really long time, at some point... Fuck, dude. Have- a lot of shit has happened to the three of us in 120 years, Okay. Both now you're talking 65 million fucking years. Guaranteed one of the three of us would have a skateboard shoved up their ass in that period. Guaranteed. Probably buy one of the other ones. Yeah, probably. Good chance. CMFTR versus House of Black. Bro, why are these matches so long? Yeah, and then the show ended and we had another real great moment there. CM Punk decides now is a great time to bury Hangman Page. I misread that. You know, we'll talk more about this tonight, but... Um, Where's all the talent on this show? Well, Can anyone they're... figure this out? I mm. guess there are still issues between the two sides, says Brandon. Yeah, well, say. you're right about that. I heard someone on the internet posted something about Ryan Nemeth being told to leave Collision. He was not allowed to go to the show hmm. for the second time because he has issues with CM Punk. And we'll have more on this later on tonight. I got a little story. We get home, and then all of a sudden I hear a chirp. Ah... It's one of the smoke detectors. Oh. Oh, I thought you should brought a bird in the house. I take it down. It chirped again. So then I took down the one in our bedroom. It chirped again. I went to the other bedroom. Chirped again. Then my son's room, and then the office. How big is your house? I, I, I think more. that Vinny might be right. There's a bird in the house. Anyway. Tonight is the Polka Song Contest. Granny, you are number one gonna be a tough one to beat on your grandson don't visit your grandmother brian why do we let anyone else enter i like that one you don't say t and a is awful wait what yeah what else can i say vince russo go away he's so bad even craig drinks a beer they say that ai is gonna take over the world yeah. It's going to take a while. All right, Granny. Bye, bye, bye. Adios. Red Fiber. I sit down, and I wait. I wait some more. Where the fuck's the steak at? But I'm calm. This fucking guy. Just all of a sudden, he stands up and he goes, You know what? Hey, fuck this place. <laughs> I was like, whoa, this guy's mad. And he stands up and he goes, Yeah, you know what? Hey, fuck all you in here. And he starts walking out the door, and he's stomping away, and he turns and goes, Hey, you know what, you guys? Hey, fuck off! And he walks out the door. Bill Barons is so preposterously ridiculous that Jeff Jarrett is laughing at Bill Barons telling him that you cannot wrestle tonight. I don't know. You have to respect a man in an authority position actually taking charge, you know, and laying down the law on the people that work for him. You know, you, you, you got to respect that. Right, Brian? I wasn't listening. All right, Don. Well, what do we got coming up next week? And he takes his headphones off. He goes, well, you know, guys, next week we've got a show. And he, he literally builds it up. I, I, I can't remember what was on the show, so I'd, I'd have to sell it like I was selling the Brazilian steakhouse. He'd be like, yeah, you know, and I've been to a lot of Brazilian steakhouses, guys. And, man, this one in Bellevue. This one in Bellevue, this Fogo de Chao. Man, this is a place to go for me. I'm telling you guys, they got Picanha! And he just starts going and he just knocks over his mic and he builds to this crescendo. I don't know how he does it every time. 
I reviewed this show with Dave last night, and I woke up this morning to find out that everyone says that we liked it more than everybody. Like, apparently, it wasn't like this show was disliked, but apparently in certain places, this show was hated. We've been watching the old original NWA TNA shows, and there were times where it felt like this here episode of Dynamite was paced and put together and formatted like an NWA TNA show. Now, let me make this clear. It was a zillion times better than the best of those shows. You didn't need to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then all of a sudden do a show where eight attacks set up matches on Wembley. This would have been much better spread out over the last month or so. This, like, four-minute segment had more camera cuts than a month of Monday Night Raw. Don bought him his first weight set. Yes, yes, his yes. His first tub of protein. Yeah. And then, and I quote, vials of things I didn't even know the words. That is true. That is what the man what? said. And he says this, and Jim Ross looks at the camera like, And he unveils the picture, which is a a godlike Don Callis holding up the severed head of Chris Jericho. I laughed so hard. He is back to being Joker Sting now. This was when the show became an acid trip. MJF has a plan to train for these Aussies. He is going to take Adam Cole to the Outback Steakhouse. This is how we will beat Aussie Open with a kangaroo kick. And they get blow-up crocodiles, and they use it as bait, and they give this man a double clothesline. Call MJF! What the fuck's going on? Get in here! So the next thing we see is Tony Khan's office. And we know this because there's a sign on the door that says, Tony Khan, stop doing this shit in the back. There will be no double clotheslines in the back. There's people around. And MJF and Adam Cole come out. And MJF says, this guy's going to regret this come 2024. This is the first time he's ever, to my knowledge, shown up to be in an angle. And he opens a door, and he puffs up his chest, and he says, What'd you say, Max? What'd you say? And he says, hey, man, you look great. Tony suddenly smiles, and he fucking reverts to press conference Tony Khan. I was absolutely positive that someone slipped me acid (laughs) or like something dude tony khan having to lay down the law on his performers and being bad at it It felt like they were trying to make a joke about themselves oh they were definitely and it was undoubtedly uh, it's not the best joke i ever saw and maybe not the best thing to be joking about we had a texas chainsaw massacre death match this was a complete and total nwa tna clusterfuck from the uh, nashville fairgrounds I'm not sure that I would set up this tag team title match on the biggest show of all time, as they're advertising it, by having the Bucks barely beat the guns via cheating. She's trying to, you know, she puts her hand on her shoulder like it's going to be all right, and and Dana just goes, no subtlety whatsoever. She's turning on old uh, Kalani Jordan here coming up. I'm trying to think between both shows. Was there anything better than this? I don't think there was. No. He's got that little TV behind him because it's a talk show. And appearing on the screen is Noam Dar and his wacky crew, Metaphor. Every time you lie, I'm going to buzz you. And so Noam starts talking here. Bam, bam. And they put this big fucking thing on the screen. Fraud, it says. The fraud alarm. And, uh, And, you know, it's funny. And then it starts bordering on maybe not being funny anymore. And then Noam goes, you know, none of this matters. I'm going to beat you next week. And also goes, bam, that's a lie. I fucking howled. And uh, the segment was completely, utterly preposterous. But I loved it. But man, these two guys hit it out of the park. I thought Wesley was great talking about being the underdog and always being told you can't do it. And Carmelo was great with his promo. And uh, it was one of those when it was over, I was more excited for the match Coming out of it, then I was going in. Well, I will say this was, in fact, a hell of a go-home show. Yeah. They put a bunch of matches together and made them seem important, each in its own way. On the whole, a very good go-home show by NXT.